Hello and welcome to Stocks Down Under. My name is Stuart Roberts and I'm one of the co-founders of our publication. And joining me today on Monday, the 7th of February, 2022 from Melbourne is Mr. Glenn Smith, who's the CEO of Tali Digital, ASX TD1. Good afternoon, Glenn. Good afternoon, Stuart. Good to see you. And now is a good time to be Glenn Smith because uh, you've spent uh, several years now at, at laboring away at Tali Digital to, to bring the, the uh, Tali technology for um, correcting uh, attention problems in children into the mainstream. And suddenly a big shot US firm called Achille Interactive um, wants to use your technology to create the next big thing to treat uh, attention uh, problems uh, to, to medical grade standards. It's been a great 2021, you would uh, agree. I think you're right. I mean, it is a good time to be involved in Tali and in this digital therapeutics field. Uh, this is a really, you know, technology-driven driven high growth sector. Um, and you're right, we have done the hard yards, you know, the hard graft in terms of being a company that is akin to a medical device biotech company. We've done those initial clinical trials, the core research, built the products, got the products out there and have done this IP license agreement with Achille Interactive in North America, along with you know, a clinical development program with them. And you're right, the, at the core of it is that our IP platform, the Tali algorithm platform, is going to be the backbone and the game face that we deliver are going to be the backbone of the next generation products Achille sells to clinicians and potentially direct to consumer in America for children with ADHD and then potentially autism spectrum disorder. So we're actually driving, we're the Intel inside, we're driving these next generation digital therapeutics, these gamified tools, which have medicine outcomes to them, which are proven. And we're near term, you know, in 2022, as part of that Achille agreement, we finalize the clinical trial program, submit to the FDA, and all our milestones payments from Achilles start to kick in and then the commercialization starts in North America on approval. So it is a good time to be part of the Tali story and be a stakeholder in this Tali journey. All right, let's just step back in time and talk about the original Tali technology and then let's talk about the Achilles upside. So uh, the, the Cornish lab at Monash University developed a, a video game suitable for kids three to eight which uh, has some um, uh, peer-reviewed data showing that with the kids with attention problems, particularly ADHD, um, you can begin to correct those problems with, with, uh, with the Tali technology, which is now uh, uh, being used uh, uh, globally in various uh, school systems around, around the world. Um, talk to us about the, uh, how that technology has developed over the last few years. Yeah, you're right. So that core research is out of that Australian university lab. And what they look, looked at is whether or not gamified interventions so that training, so that identification through a diagnostic aid, so a test, and then that training, so that therapy outcome could be delivered for inattention. So those children who suffer inattention, and that's the, you know, in lay terms, that's the ability to stay focused on the task, right? Being able to complete that, deliver on and execute on those type of tasks. So that's the core of inattention. And deploying these type of digital games, which were, could be widely accessible, easily um, used by children because of the user interface being so um, game-based, right, and so non-threatening, and then allowing that to be disseminated through an application that's available on app stores could mean global accessibility for these tools. So that lab developed that core research, published those papers, and it showed benefit. It actually showed that delivering out the Tali training program for these individuals with inattention, which is you know, a primary symptom of ADHD and obviously autism spectrum disorder and other intellectual and behavioural disorders, that there was actual benefit to delivering these gamified applications. So not only you know, looking at the symptoms, but treating the underlying cause. That was the big breakthrough. Drugs we're just masking the symptoms. So addressing the symptoms of these conditions like ADHD and autism spectrum disorder, right? So allowing that child to be in different environments, school or at home and have that symptom suppressed so they could do that. But those drugs weren't actually treating the underlying core issue of inattention at the brain level. That's where Tali really made the big breakthrough. Treating that underlying brain core issue of inattention 
making a substantive physiological change in that brain health is what Tali does. That's why there's such a benefit to these digital therapeutics. And that's why this global accessibility play, because they are all application-based and can be delivered on tablets, iPads, and smartphones, will deliver widespread adoption for these medical technologies. You know, it's interesting. When we were working on the uh, recent research report that we, we, we uh, were commissioned by you to do for Pitt Street Research, uh, what we learned was that you survey a typical cross-section of, of, of US parents, of children with uh, kids who've got uh, a diagnosed uh, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. And something like 40% of them will say, if there was something better than, than medication, we'd try it. Now, for a, for a condition where five to 10% of, of kids, more boys than girls, uh, have some sort of attention uh, deficit problem, uh, that's a huge opportunity with parents looking for alternatives of which you have developed one of them, right? Yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, that, that was a primary driver is that can you deliver out non-invasive tools that give parents and also healthcare professionals that first line option of testing and then treating a child? Don't forget, we're talking about children between the age of three to eight. So that really core area of early childhood development when your brain is so plastic that you can make these significant differences. But at the same time, if you deliver drugs at that evolving brain level, we don't know what the long-term effects are as yet through longitudinal studies, and we they only treat the symptoms. So giving the option to healthcare professionals and parents to have these non-invasive tools, which they can help deliver out of clinic as well, so do remotely, which is much better for a child, and get that first line intervention to address these core underlying issues so that you can provide a much more holistic approach to the care of that child and to the brain health outcomes of that child in that early development period is so critical for parents, particularly those who may have leading to a diagnosis of autism spectrum disorder or ADHD or have a diagnosis. You know, in the US, that's about nine to 10%, according to the CDC. You know, it can be different in uh, other geographic regions, but primarily that's a large cohort of children who can benefit from these non-invasive tools and deliver out benefits with their current drug regime as well. So it's complementary, but what we're trying to do is get to a point where these digital therapeutics are the first line tools. So the new gold standard, so that the these initial use of drugs is eradicated in this early childhood population, or at least reduced to a level that's relevant to specific cohorts in that in that age population group. All right, and then uh, things get really exciting for um, for, for for Tali. Um, uh, uh, Achille Interactive uh, from the US comes knocking, uh, and they've developed uh, some some medical grade prescription digital therapeutics, like video games as as therapeutics in this space. But they've discovered that you have something that they don't have. And that leads to an interesting collaboration. Talk to us about your collaboration with Achille. Yeah, they're an amazing business. You know, they're very like-minded. Um, you know, our teams get on really well. They're, they're looking at the same thing. They're looking at inattention. So attention as a core um, tool uh, that, that humans use, that the brain uses. And they've developed those video games, prescription um, digital video games for teenagers, basically, in that plus eight range where... Um, you know, there's a child who is already diagnosed, already has this clinical condition and de delivering out this prescription therapeutic for it. What's really interesting is that they have that prescription therapeutic for that age range, but they don't have the diagnostic aid or the assessment tool at the beginning. So they can't assess the child through a digital tool like Tali can and get a baseline reading of that child to see where their attentional case capability is in their cognitive performances and then go on to their prescription therapeutic. They have to use other tools or other healthcare professionals to get that baseline reading through you know, really, you know, sometimes antiquated testing methods, but other times sophisticated methods, which are you know, really troublesome for the child if they have to spend lots of time in clinics. And we have that assessment part, right? So no one else has that assessment part. And we've proven that through a clinical trial and use in the education system in Australia. But when you combine it with our therapeutic tool as well, we have this diagnostic aid assessment tool that combines with our TALI therapy, therapy tool 
and that can service the three to eight year range, right? And so we can help build up that support and that care model really early on in life in that, for that child. And then if they require ongoing assistance and help, all that data, all that brain data is captured through the Tali system. And then they can feed through to the Achille Endeavor product once they get past eight, nine years of age. Then they can continue that care model. So we're really looking at assisting the family and the healthcare professionals and those around the child right from early childhood, right through three, right through the three to eight range for Tali, plus eight into the teenage range with Achille. And then both companies, you know, we've got big plans to expand our core IP platform into other age ranges as we move across as well. But that's our blue sky opportunity moving forward. Now, what's exciting about this is it's happened in an environment where Wall Street has discovered uh, uh, prescription digital therapeutics. So Achille recently announced they were going public uh, uh, via a SPAC onto uh, uh, NASDAQ. And the, uh, the post, market, uh, post money capitalization would be in the order of a billion US dollars. Yeah. That's, a, that's a pretty well capitalized partner to be working with, I must say. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that you know, is always a risk when you're a company having a IP and clinical development agreement with another company is, are they going to be able to pay you? Well, we've answered that question pretty quickly, right? We just keep hitting our milestones uh, and you know, under the, the terms of that agreement where they uh, list on the NASDAQ, they're going to have access to about $400 million in capital. So we have a lot more surety around the fact that if we hit our milestones, we're going to get all those milestone payments, right? And they've got a lot of capital to run that commercialization program for the Tali products. So that gives us a lot of confidence about delivering on our own milestones so that we ship the product to Achille and then they have the capital and the expertise to run that commercialization program. Because they're going to be listed on NASDAQ and have very large institutional investors on their registry, they're going to have lots more access to capital as well as needed. So if and as needed. So it's a really interesting story because it's, it's a really exciting space for digital health and digital therapeutics. Massive double digit growth last 12 months in capital inflows into the sector. Huge, you know, 30 to 50% growth in capital inflows into digital therapeutic companies last year. Um, it's a really exciting space pre you know, we are post this initial COVID period where our telemedicine, digital health, digital therapeutics are really going to become the norm in terms of a whole lot of these mental welfare, brain health and other type of behavioural conditions um, because they're so accessible, they're a value cost and they're proven. And that's the, the best thing about it is that they're evidence-based and they're proven and we're going to wrap a really good commercialisation model around it. And what's impressive to me is I wouldn't be surprised if there was a time when um, uh, agencies like the FDA were a little sceptical of the idea of video games as therapeutics. Mm. You know, it, we, we grew up in, a, in an environment where our parents wanted to stop playing video games because it was going to be bad for our mental health. Yeah. Now, now flip, the, flip the switch. You've got um, video games which are good for, for brain training. That would have required a bit of education on the part of the regulators. And yet yeah. with the first of these getting approved, the timing's perfect for you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've spent a bit of time with the FDA, but so people like Achille and others really getting them across how these tools work and what the evidence is behind them. Um, you know, but, but our first generation product received class two FDA uh, two years ago. So we've been had the capacity to you know, really do market testing and, and deliver that product out. So we've learned a lot during that period and that's allowed us to deliver on the promise of what we've got through this Achille partnership and move to a, you know, a larger FDA submission so that we can generate significant reimbursement models around what we do because the FDA and Medicaid and Medicare and insurance groups and payers in the US are now fully across the actual value and the benefit and the drivers behind these new digital diagnostic aids and therapeutic tools delivered as video games, as you say. Right. And 2022 is a good year because it's a fair bet that before Christmas of this year, you and Achille will be in a position to, to make your first filings with, with the agency. Yeah, I mean, we put out um, a really good update late last year where we mapped out um, what we're doing. We're right in the middle of our 
first part of our clinical trial program now. So that's being run through our great partner, Duke Clinical Research Institute in the US, who's effectively the largest clinical research institute on the planet, um, preeminent in this digital therapeutic ADHD space. So great confidence around what we're doing there, but we deliver, we're in, we're in that phase right now. We move into the next phase of the clinical trial in a few more months. Um, once we complete that, and don't forget, these are digital tools. So we're running the program really quickly in that, you know, we do the test, which takes 20 minutes, and then we do the program for five weeks, right? And then we collect that data, and then we do a post follow-up. So really able to, you know, do, do, do these clinical trial programs really quickly. So by mid-year, we'll be right in the midst of that, you know, pivotal clinical trial, have, you know, that early data with us and, you know, if all goes to plan and we get the results that we want, um, we've already started discussions with the FDA, have a team in place doing the, the pre-work on our submission and no doubt as long as, long as the clinical trial program does what we think it's going to do because we don't forget we've done, you know, nine clinical trials before and we've had really great results previously um, that we'll submit to the FDA and it's in this calendar year. So that triggers a whole lot of development payments to us from Achille because we're in the clinical trial program. And then once we submit to the FDA and get that approval, we get another US $2 million payment. Plus it then triggers a whole lot of first payments because we run into the commercialization phase. So there's a substantive amount of money coming in, which is going to be received as revenue for Tali. So, you know, during the forward periods in this calendar year and next financial years, we'll be reporting substantive revenue um, and really driving this company towards profitability, break even and profitability. Um, and that's going to be a great period of growth for us. Um, and we, I still haven't even spoken about our plans, you know, in India and Australia and, and what we're going to do there with marketing our products in 2022 as well. Well, let's let's conclude uh, with, with discussion of that. You did a very interesting uh, partnering deal. I think it was early uh, 2021 with the group that owns The Times. Uh, the Times of India is uh, the largest English language newspaper in what would arguably the, be the largest English language market in the world. Yeah. Uh, uh, owned by the Jain family, I think, since the 1940s. Mm. So their family office has invested in, in Tali stock. And the idea is then to take the Tali product into the, into the Indian market. Deals like that can be uh, replicated in multiple other markets, given that uh, you, the, the problems you're facing are global. And yeah. it's relatively easy to adapt uh, the product to, uh, to, to uh, specific market conditions locally, right? Yeah, yeah. I think just on that product bit, you know, what we're doing is, is a beautiful thing. We're building gamified applications, which, have, you know, which are attractive across geographic regions and, and across demographics so, and, and cultures. So we've got that ability to deliver the game and we just need to identify language translation, which helps with that customer and user journey. So we can do that. Um, but we've got a beautiful baseline algorithm set and game set that we can deliver in multiple jurisdictions. But you're right, that deal that we have with Brand Capital Times Group in India allows us access to the consumers and the parents in India, right? Probably one of the most exciting largest markets that we could enter. We've had a small, um, small you know, issue during 2021 because of COVID. And don't forget, India had you know, the world's largest COVID-19 outbreak during 2021. And that course, yes, yeah. put us on the back foot. But yeah, we sort of learned a lot from that because we did some pre-marketing activities and sold the product in early on and knew what, knew what advertising and marketing um, below the line type activities work, you know, those digital communication activities. So we're going to ramp them up in 2022 and start to accelerate that direct-to-consumer model, um, work with education providers there as well and start to generate actual acquisition and then conversion and then payments of revenue in that Indian market. And I think you're right, because we, we will deliver in that market and hopefully prove out that conversion model, we'll just replicate that in other life-alike markets. And that's really exciting because we can take all those lessons, we know what works, and then we can put the plan in place in another market with the right partner and then deliver out again. Well, Glenn Smith, well done on what you and your colleagues at Tally have achieved. And here's to a great uh, 2022. Keep up the good work. Thank you, Stuart. Appreciate your support and take care.